Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my friend Kanisha here and we're going to be doing a traditional sewing. I am so impressed with the end results of this install that I really want to give you guys the most details so that you guys can achieve a style like this. The first part that I'm doing is going to be the part that she wants to be her natural part. And once I've done that, I go ahead and I part about an inch away of hair. And I'm using my comb as a guide to ensure that once that hair that is going to be left out is pressed, it does not show through and the tracks are not seen. So I use the tail of my comb as a guide to do that. And then I go on the other side of the original part and I part again about an inch away. And I curve it around almost to the center of the hair. That's where that curve ends um, because we really want it to be a deep, curved part and her hair is long enough to cover the tracks and to look very natural once it's the style is complete so what i do next is go ahead and braid that leave out out the way and this is hair that is going to be left out is going to be pressed into the style you guys um once i finish braiding this out i'm going to dive into the perimeter leave out which is going to be the sides and the back so, you know, sometimes you could just leave it here and don't leave much hair out, but you know, she wants to have the perimeter out so that she can put it in the ponytail. And as you can see, I'm using my comb again as a guide. Some of you guys might think, okay, that might be too far back, but I absolutely hate when the tracks are, sh are shown. So I don't mind leaving a little bit of extra hair out just so that the tracks aren't shown and i'm sure a lot of clients would rather that than to be struggling to cover their tracks yeah you leave a little extra out and i use my comb as a guide and now i'm just kind of braiding it out i left some out at the back and then i'm gonna once i'm finished braiding this part out i'm gonna go on the other side and do the exact same thing however the other side is a little bit different because the hair is going to be falling towards her face once i install the weave so what i'm doing is you know still leaving out the perimeter but i'm not paying too much attention to if it's going to cover or not because even when she puts it in a ponytail it won't be a slick back ponytail will kind of be like a curved uh banged ponytail so we really don't need the this hair to be too far back, but we do need enough hair so that, you know, everything falls naturally. And if she was to like pull it back, it's still not showing the tracks or anything. So I'll go ahead and I braid that out the way. This is hair that we are not going to be adding any tracks to. This is just her leave out. So now I'm diving into the anchors. These are the most important braids of this style any braid that goes around the perimeter is this uh considered the anchors and they are very very important so i do want the anchors to be really really thin because again i don't want the tracks to be too high especially close to where her leave out is so we we make these braids really really small and i'm using a new technique you guys uh at the beginning of the hair i go ahead and i crochet a little bit of braiding hair at the, the tip of the anchor and then i'm going to just braid it use it as a guide to braid around the perimeter one thing i would say after doing this technique this is the first time i've tried this technique i would definitely say i should have probably used some braiding hair in the first braid that i did um, to make it a little bit stronger because when i was uh, finishing this style I did see that it was stretching a little bit too much on her scalp and I did have to cut the braiding hair or the anchored bra braiding hair. So I would use this again. However, I would just do it differently. It did help with the seamlessness of the style. However, like I'm not, you know, in the business of pulling hair out. So that's why you want to talk to your clients and ensure that they are not in any pain because once she expressed that, Okay, it's a little bit too tight at the front. I went ahead and handled that real, real quick. And this is what I mean, guys. I, I pulled the hair through, but the braid that it's pulled through on is not thick enough. It's not strong enough. So even though I lightly braided it down, once I started adding tracks and sewing it on, it became too much pressure for her. And so I kind of had to cut the connection between the two braids. So, all right, once I get to the back, I kind of start braiding in the ends of the hair. I went ahead and crocheted again on this side. And this wasn't an issue because by now we're a couple 
steps back from that first anchored braid so that one I did not have to worry about but the connection as you guys can see it looks seamless it's going to help but I just wish that that first braid was a little bit stronger so these four braids is what I call my anchor they are th gonna be the thinnest braids in her head and they are going to be flat and it's gonna help the sewing once I've done that I don't really care too much about the other braids in the center but we're still gonna make them small and neat and not too bulky so I'm just gonna braid them down I'm gonna braid it out and then in each braid I'm gonna pull the end of the previous braid into it and braid it down I'm gonna keep that going So as you guys can see, I'm just kind of, you know, it's a bigger braid, but it's still a decent size for her hair texture. So her hair is not too thin or it's not too thick. So you don't want to, if you have really, really thick hair, you really don't want those parts to be too big because the it's easy for the style to get bulky and you don't want the back of a sewing to look too big or make the head look too big so just be mindful of your braids you guys and so I'm going to take the top two braids and I'm just going to braid them I'm going to use them as legs of my braid and just braid them down into that um on the right side as you guys can see I took the braids from the left side the two of them and I started using them as legs and I braided them down on the other side and then I'm gonna do that to the other two as well. So the two braids at the top right, I'm gonna pull those down and I'm gonna braid them, use their them as legs for my braid and I'm gonna braid them down um, as well. And as I'm going, I'm still pulling that leg from the bottom into the braid because we have to do something with it. So I'm gonna pull that one into the braid and just braid it down. And at this point it's getting a little bit thicker, but no worries guys, like it's gonna be fine. All right, so now we're at the last one. So I'm just gonna braid this down. I'm gonna put both legs up into it. So the leg on the right and then the leg on the left, and I'm just gonna keep braiding down. And once I have the end of this braid, I'm going to go ahead and sew it down to just kind of get it secured. So this is me sewing it down now, you guys. So the thread that I'm using is so very, very important to me because I've used other threads, but these thread, this thread right here is very strong. And when I do my sew-ins, I really do them to last as at least two months. So my sewings really last because of one, my foundation is really strong, and then two, the thread that I use, and three, of course, my method of sewing the hair down. So the thread is like a nylon thread, and I'll link anything that I use in this video for you guys, so you won't have to search too hard to find it, but this is not a usual thread. It's hard to get used to, However, like it's really, really strong. I've been using it for some years now and it's never disappointed me. So now I'm adding in the first track and this track is doubled, you guys. So normally I try not to do double tracks, but I really, really did an amazing job with installing this. So that is um, two tracks. A track is folded and I'm making sure that the, the first that I put in is anchored really securely and then I'm going under through and then I wrap my thread around my needle twice so every single stitch that I do is secure yes it's a pain in the butt trying to take this install out but you're gonna get your money's worth because it's gonna last it's not gonna slip it's not gonna um, do anything the thread is not going to itch you because it's not that you know that cotton type of thread um, but you're gonna get a really secured install so I went ahead and did the first lap in her hair and when I came back around I'm going to go past that first stitch and as you can see once I get to the edge of her hair you guys I separate the two uh, tracks so once I get to the edge I'm going to separate the two tracks just because I don't want the edge to be bulky so once I separate it then I fold it over so imagine if I 
didn't separate it and I had two tracks going and then I had to fold it over it would be so big and so bulky so I always separate it and uh, go out a little bit like an inch or two I come back down and then I meet into that second track and then we put them together and fold them up you guys are gonna see a different example so now I'm finished with my first first bundle and this is what it looks like and today we're using about three and a half bundles of hair so we're trying to put in as much as we can because she likes it really really full and so I'm on my second bundle and I again it is doubled as you guys can see my knots are very very serious as soon as I push it through I go under and up and then I uh, put the thread around it a couple of times once or twice it depends on where I'm at in this gap I would say so if I'm just in the middle maybe I'll put a uh, make a one turn on it but once I get to like the edge or something like that I'll make it even more secure so um, now I am on the edge and again like I said I normally kind of leave one track behind for that as you guys can see I left the track behind and then I'm sewing up to like maybe like two inches and then I'm going to have to flip it back once I get to a certain point so I don't want to go up too far you guys I just kind of go out and then once I get to a certain point I decide okay I probably need to flip it right now so once I'm at the edge of her head right there I'm going to go ahead and flip it and sew it on top of the same braid so once I'm sewing um, on the braid like you guys see along the front I'm kind of put placing a track along the front of the braid just because I want when she flips it back, the tracks aren't pulling back with it. I want it to be just hair. And I, I think I have an example later on in the video of what I'm talking about. Uh, it's kind of called the seamless method to where when you pull the hair back, you're not seeing any tracks at all. You're just seeing kind of like just hair. So again, I'm on the other side and I've left a track behind. And I'm sewing all the way up to uh, where it meets those two braids but I'm gonna cut it and once I I'm in the front you guys I do cut the weft <laughs> I'm not that person that's gonna hang on to the weft for their life I don't want to compromise the style I don't want a bulky sewing um, so yeah we don't mind cutting the wefts over here I know some people you know if you have really really expensive hair you don't want to cut the weft but once I get to a certain point where I feel like I don't want it to be bulky I'm gonna cut the weft so yeah that's a, just a little warning right there I try not to cut it all the time but especially in the front I'm gonna cut it and then now I've met up with a second track I folded it both over and now we're going across um, across her hair and now I'm at the top you guys and I have this is what I mean by that seamless when I pulled it back you can't really see the tracks you're just seeing hair so that when she does have her natural hair on top of that you're not seeing any tracks you're just seeing hair I've done three bundles so now I'm on my uh, fourth bundle and I'm not going to use all of it clearly I'm just going to use maybe half of it and then I'm just going to complete the top there I go I'm cutting the track because I'm at the front we're going to cut some tracks when we get to the top so the first two bundles are safe <laughs> until we get to that third bundle that's when tracks start getting cut um, just so we can have that seamless sewing without having to worry about folding over and something being too bulky so right here is where she um, you know started kind of complaining about those um, the beginning of those four braids and I kind of had to cut the connection between the braid that's surrounding the main perimeter and the braid that is along the hairline like her forehead line uh, I had to cut see she's like tapping on it right there so I did have to 
take that out and cut the connection. And once I cut the connection between them and re sewed it on, she was perfectly fine. So I wasn't able to show that. I have like this panic thing <laughs> where whenever something is going wrong, I tend to turn the camera off, which is very inauthentic. I really need to film that. But I feel like me telling y'all what the issue was is kind of still good. But I probably should have filmed it and showed you guys like, hey, I did have to cut. Um, to cut that out and redo it um yeah so this is how the hair looks so when she puts it in a ponytail it's gonna look super natural and i'm just spraying it with some hairspray because we're getting ready to straighten it first and then we're gonna curl it and i'm using my babyliss pro to straighten i just got a brand new one so i'm excited about that So I definitely straightened the weave on like 430, 450. But when it comes to her hair, I might do like 410 or lower. Um, of course, to for the integrity of her hair, she does have natural hair. Um, so yeah, I'm going to spray some heat protectant on her hair. And then now I'm going to straighten her natural hair. And you guys are going to kind of see how that falls. And then I'm going to trim it up. You guys, I'm going to frame it to her face and frame it, trim it to where like there's not a big difference between her natural hair and the, uh, the weave. So I don't want it to be like a drastic, like her natural hair is way shorter than the weave. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut it a little bit. And I just love like when I'm doing this part and seeing that, oh, we have so much enough hair left out. The track is not showing. <laughs> Yay. So your biggest thing when you're doing this style is, yes, um, you know, we can cover the tracks. But if your client is having to consistently try to like do the most to cover the track, that's where the problem really lies. Like, so yeah, we could have had a thinner leave out and been able to still cover the tracks. But once they start doing it on their own, like, you know, it gets a little bit harder for them, but having enough left out is amazing. So here I am just kind of trimming it down a little bit, just so that when I curl it, it has a nice flow to it. And just so that when it's out, like it doesn't look like a drastic change from her hair. All right, so now I'm going to use my T3 and I'm going to I'm on the biggest barrel that they have and I'm going to just curl it and yeah, we're almost done. She already looks beautiful as you guys can see this jet black she did dye the hair jet black. Look at the finished look you guys. She looks amazing. It looks so pretty. It looks so classy. She looks like a classy lady like she's about to be about her business the the boss that she is um so it looks so pretty you guys it flows so nicely again this is three and a half bundles and yeah this is what three and a half bundles look like it's nice and full and yeah i love a traditional sewing i just think this is the way to go like y'all know i stopped doing wigs like that and frontals and stuff because i just feel like i love this style much better and i just want to stay authentic to myself and what i love and yeah so if you've made it this far to me that means you like me so go ahead and like the video show your love as well as comment in the comment section what i taught you in this video if i taught you anything go ahead and let me know what you learned as well as if you're not already subscribed go ahead and subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you next time